Our topic today is ICD-10 PCS coding of neurosurgical procedures. My name is Lynn Keen and I'm the author of numerous courses on PCS coding for Libman education, including the new 2CEU PCS neurosurgery coding course. Today's presentation is a sample from that course. The approaches to the brain are three main ones that are listed in all the tables. They are maybe not so confusing when you take them one at a time and understand what the doctor's trying to tell you with their documentation. So let's go from left to right. The first one is a burr hole. Now the burr hole is a small hole. And to give you a relationship for this, it would be a small enough hole that would allow a small tube to be placed inside. It could allow another device like a monitoring device to be placed through that hole. But the surgeon cannot really see the brain through this hole except for what is right underneath the small hole. It's usually about the size around maybe the barrel of um, a ballpoint pen. So maybe a centimeter or so at the most. And these holes are made with trephins. And those are the little blue and white thing that's underneath there that literally has burrs on the edge and they drill a hole into the skull. So at no point can the surgeon really expose the site of the procedure or visualize inside. They can only put the instruments through. And that's why this is percutaneous. Now, if they put through an endoscope, because they do have small endoscopes that can go through this hole, then of course we would code percutaneous endoscopic. All right, now next, the next one in the middle is the craniotomy. Now this one is an open procedure, but the part where this gets confusing is the surgeon starts out documenting that they made burr holes. And if you can see around the corners of, in the picture, around the corners of the craniotomy flap in her skull, they started with burr holes because they have to make an opening to get in. And they make several holes, and then they use a saw to literally connect the dots and make the flap. The part about the craniotomy is that it is just what it says. It's a cut into the skull. They raise a flap. They can even take that flap off, move it to the side, but the important part is that the flap gets returned at the end of the procedure. That's to close it up. And then they're gonna attach the flap back on with little micro plates and micro screws that I've shown there. So it is open, but the flap goes back. Then the third kind, the surgeon is going to describe a craniectomy. The craniectomy is just what it says. Ectomy, removing a piece of the skull, and it does not go back for whatever reason. It is either um, broken in a fracture, it is diseased, it is the wrong size or shape, something is wrong with it, and it does not go back. They are then going to replace the skull with something else. So metal mesh and metal plate, uh, these days, more and more, you're seeing 3D molded plastic plates to take the place of that bone, or even plastic mesh that goes in. So I think if you get what the surgeon is trying to tell you with the terminology and not be confused that all of these things start with a burr hole, and you follow this, that the burr holes, the only thing they do is percutaneous. If they use an endoscope, it's percutaneous endoscopic. Craniotomy is open, but the flap goes back on at the end. An ectomy, they're taking the flap off never to have it return, and they have to replace the skull with something else at the end. This is just a sample of the concepts included in the neurosurgery coding course. There are also many other courses available to help you better understand the complex concepts of PCS coding. These include cardiac procedures, vascular procedures, and spinal fusion coding. Also, the root operation flashcards are available from Libman Education to help you with complex root operation decisions. 
and the vascular flashcards are also available from them.